Mm -hmm. Any interaction should be I mean, that's one. That's just awesome. Awesome. That's true. Which is oh, just, that we just have one sentence. Okay. How are we doing? Waiting, waiting for the uh, we're, we're waiting for life the to say, uh, <laughs> see the signal. Another one of those. Yeah, yeah surf D and D. Yeah, that's it. After you print out your pages. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I feel privileged. I've got four hours sleep. I couldn't sleep. You couldn't sleep. I, I was afraid to oversleep. I know what you mean. So, okay, this calibration is about to start when this happens. It, it uh, ends 15 seconds later. Hopefully we'll get a maybe we'll get a voice report that they saw it. Okay. They'll they say well they they they've got an integration time so even after it starts they may not report it until 15 right. seconds after it's even over. So yeah. well it's, it's hard to say. We basically have no idea. Yeah. Um, so I'm a, it's working better than I expected I, and I don't understand it right now. I need to analyze it because we you know we're getting out of the sun sensor field of view right now. Yeah. Can you configure the lander in the flight system test bed to have 3.4 degrees tilt about the 124 degrees from plus X? Okay. Really, in all honesty, the numbers that I like to look right. here, okay, to see whether we, we hit the spacecraft too much, mm -hmm. are the first two. Mm -hmm. The first two, the only thing is doing over a period of three minutes, compute what's the maximum mm -hmm. excursion on the minimum excursion. Mm -hmm. So the only real issue is, is if this thing's off, does it read like the latch valves are on? Well, right, but I'm saying that even if it did, the software would never take that. During the day, yeah. it'll run 805 in the test bed. We'll do this stuff, press stuff again, so. Oh, okay. Ah, don't worry about it, Dave. You've got plenty of time. It's just that now we're nervous. The other thing is that we don't have the verification to do it. We created a great team, people that I'll forever be proud of working with. I mean, this is something I will never forget. This is something you don't do every day. And they all knew that, and they all wanted to get involved. You can't design a, a process that produces a pr product like this. You need to take the, the very best of what people can do, find out what they can do, and put it together, and make them uh, realize the answer on their own. You have to let them discover uh, how to solve problems. Problem solving is the very essence of what Mars Pathfinder has been over these four years. And, and we surprised ourselves as we went about exactly how tough it was to do this job. We've worked people and ourselves to the very bone, uh, but I think uh, y you have to. You can't, you can't imagine spreading this out without spending a lot more money over a large number of organizations and institutions because work has to be done. It, work will, this is all part of the deal. It's all part of the great experiment of doing things for the first time. Uh, this concept that we developed for a team is actually a very old one. I mean, basically, the way to do this is to not have rules for building a team. <laughs> this is what teamwork's all about. <laughs> you, and that, and <laughs> oh, I love my team. I can, so what can I say? I mean, they're... <laughs> <laughs> That's what teamwork is, and making people, uh, giving them the space to be themselves and to focus and, and problem solve on their own. That's what makes it so exciting. It's not, it's not a new thing, you know. That's, whenever you've seen something successful in our history, it's because this happened. And there, there are no ways, no magic way to make that happen. So. <laughs> These guys, goofballs. We're at about 75 kilometers altitude, so we won't feel much for another 20 or 30 seconds. All right, this is the Mars Pathfinder flight director. We have confirmed that uh, crew stage separation has uh, occurred. And entry descent landing lead, Rob Manning, who will uh, report the real-time EDL status. Thank you, Guy Beetlesheath. Mars Pathfinder flight director is on the net. I will be giving a play-by-play -play of the events that occur during descent. Once the vehicle enters the atmosphere, 
events occur very rapidly. The spacecraft is now slowing down very rapidly. It's now traveling at it's now 40 kilometers above the surface of Mars, traveling at 6.5 kilometers per second. By now, the onboard flight software should have used the measured deceleration profile to decide precisely when to open the parachute so that the dynamic pressure at the time of parachute motor deployment is about 600 newtons per meter squared. Although the vehicle is still traveling nearly 1,000 miles per hour at the time that the parachute deployed, because the atmosphere is so thin, this dynamic pressure corresponds to only a fraction of a pound per square inch. The spacecraft is uh, slowing down rapidly because of parachute deployment. The heat shield should separate in about three, two, one, zero seconds. The next event is lander separation. That should occur, occur in about five seconds. When that occurs, the lander will descend in about ten seconds down the bridle. Lander separation should have occurred right about now. The spacecraft should be approximately a mile above the surface of Mars. The spacecraft should have passed the 600 mark. Airbags should be inflated. Rockets should be firing. And files should be cut. Not at a frequency I would expect, so I think it's probably a noise spike. Okay, copy. Mm -hmm. Hey, Dale, calm. Uh, a weak signal is coming in and out of the spectrum. Yes. Well, I'll do that. Yes. Right. Yes. <laughs> Keep watching. Is barely visible. Sammy, do you have an offset for that? That's a very good sign, everybody. I believe I have a firm signal. Yes. Okay, we've got a good strong signal now. Up here. <laughs> Let's go home. <laughs> we can't go home yet.